All right, the title of this video is It's Okay to Be Stupid, Poison Ivy, B, uh, Chiggers, and uh, Mosquito Video. And, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's one of my most popular videos is It's Okay to Be Stupid. And uh, have been, it has been requested that I make some more It's Okay to Be Stupid videos. And, uh, since I just was stupid, uh, I got to make another one. So let's whip around and get the trail. So to, I figured I'd do these chronologically. So let's let's go way back, way back. You know, my dad, uh, he was the head of the recreation department. And uh, I wouldn't say it was favoritism because he gave me the worst job in the whole recreation department. And I shouldn't say he. You know, I had to interview for the job. And I'm sure he gave them the discretion to not take me and uh, but they did and uh, so my job was weed eating all well not all day I had to pick up the trash clean the bathrooms and I uh, man that was disgusting oh my god I don't know I won't even the and the women's bathroom is the worst oh my god they're just that they're, they're, they're you know I'm, I hate to say it but some women are disgusting animals man you wouldn't believe what that bathroom looks like and I used to just take a hose and I just hose it down, man. And it, you know, and within 24 hours, because when I would leave the bathroom, it was completely clean and sanitized. And the next day, it would just, you know, I, okay, let's just let's just gross you out. Poop on the floor, tampons on the floor, uh, shit on the toilet seats, uh, you know, piss all over the place, smelt like hell, you know. Oh man, I'm telling you. All right, so let's. <laughs> you're like Kirk. Where are you going with all this? All right, so. Uh, well, you know what? Before I get into that, let's uh, let's talk about first-hand knowledge. All right, and this is a, this is another "It's Okay to Be Stupid" video, that, or story, uh, unrelated to the bug. And well, it is kind of related. All right, so uh, at that time, I was working for a corporation. Okay, and and when I say first-hand knowledge, you'll you'll get the understanding of that here in a bit. And uh, so there was these two ladies that worked the front desk suite. Loved them both, and uh, so at that time I was looking for an electrician to work on my uh, electrical box, and uh, and so you know, and the one that I called, man, he said I won't work for less than thirteen hundred, blah blah blah. And at that time, you know, I mean that's a hell of a lot of money, because really all I needed for was them to hook up the outer. You know, I'd already done all the electrical work in the house, because you know I was an electronic warfare technician in the in the Air Force, and uh, so I, but I did couldn't run the outside. Uh, I didn't know how to run the outside wire, you know, to, to bring it from the pole to the, um, the uh, electrical box. So anyway, they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we know this electrician. Of course, they're from Detroit. <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> they said, and he, he, we've heard good things about him, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't, I didn't bother to ask, well, has he ever done any work for you? That's the question you need to ask. That's called first-hand knowledge. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll just make this this a quick story. So this idiot comes in. He's he's got a flask of whiskey. He's down there. He, uh, oh my God, I, I couldn't even describe this guy. He was a pig. Uh, you know, he's he's taking the uh, the wire and he drills a hole through the side of my, you know, drills the hole bigger into the side of my house. Uh, and then he's using. He says yeah, it's like a big dick. It's a big dick, you know. And he's just doing all this shit. So then he gets into the electrical box now. Let me explain one little thing, electrical knowledge to you. You don't ever, ever cut house wire, okay, or wire in an electrical box. Because what you need is the slack. You know, we used to take those wires and you run them down to the bottom of the electrical box and bring them up to the circuit breaker. That way, if you need to move that wire inside the electrical box, you've got plenty of, of slack to, to move it. Now, you can always cap it in there, but you don't want to do that. Plus, there's limited room in there to work because, you know, you've got... Many, many wires coming into that electrical box. Anyway, this son of a bitch starts cutting wires in my electrical box. And I'm standing right there behind him. I said, to, I said, quit cutting damn wires, man. He goes, well, yeah, you got to get them in there just right. I said, quit cutting the damn wires. So that, then he drinks spun down and he, he kind of, you know, and of course at this point I'm screwed. He's already ran the wire to the outside. And he did a bad job of that. You know, had I, had I known how to do it, it really wasn't that damn difficult. You know, you really just got to be on a, fiberglass ladder so that you're not grounded and you can grab that uh, electrical wire 
and hook it right up. Got somebody walking here, so turn around briefly. And uh, so I said, you know, so I went back to the ladies. And I said, what? How, I said, this guy was a complete idiot, man. I said, he, he messed everything up. I said, how could you recommend him? Well, we had just heard that he was okay. So, and I, I, don't, I don't know what they were thinking. So, yeah, sure. Hold on. Sorry, we got interrupted. The guy wanted me to get a shot of the turtle, so I figure I'll do that for you. He said he doesn't come out very often. There he goes back down in the hall. Hate to bother him. Look at that guy dig. All right, so I <laughs> didn't expect to get that on the video. So we'll just uh, kind of walk behind them and see which way they go. Um, so anyway, so I, I said, how could you recommend this guy? And, and she goes, but we didn't know. I, well, okay, so the moral of the story is don't ever, ever recommend someone that you don't have first-hand knowledge about, that hasn't worked for you directly in some fashion. You don't go by, oh, Tom, who talked to Sally, who talked to Frank, said that so-and-so did, did a good job. You know, okay, you know, I mean, sometimes that's the only thing you have to go. So that's, that's called first-hand knowledge. All right, so getting back to the, the um, working in the park. Uh, so, you know, I, there I am working, and I'm weed-eating all day long, and picking up trash, and cleaning bathrooms, and doing all that. And uh, so one day... And I'm not sure if they was, this was a joke, or they just didn't know, or they just figured, hey, you know, we got to get this done. Maybe this guy will be too stupid, <laughs> and he'll do it. So he pointed up to this tree. He says, he says, do me a favor. He says, whack all those vines off of that tree, will you, with that weed whacker. And I said, I, okay, you know. So I go up there, and I, I beat it. I mean, it was, a, it was a huge, huge vine off of the tree. And uh, so I got it down, and... I, I bet it wasn't a couple of hours, and I broke out. I mean, my whole, whole freaking body broke out. I'm surprised it didn't get into my lungs, you know, or in my mouth. I, maybe it did. I don't rem remember exactly. I, but I was, and uh, you know, if if you can imagine poison ivy from head to toe, you know, like just just imagine getting into a batch of poison ivy and just rolling around in it. That's that's basically what it was. So they they called. They ran me. Got me in the truck and took me to the hospital, and uh, and there they gave me this one of those huge. You know, if you ever had a penicillin shot in your butt, you know, like they do in the Marine Corps, uh, it's huge, man. They just so they stuck that down there and you know ground that into my <laughs> into my butt. <laughs> and and I, I will admit it cleared up, you know, not super quick. I, of course, I got sent home, you know, and I'm 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 in, I'm in misery, you know, for for about a day or two. Um, but uh, so the moral of that story is if you're going to work with a weed eater outside for a parks department or any other fashion, learn what poison ivy looks like. <laughs> now, I could tell you what it looks like because I know now, but you need to just get on the Internet and take a look at it and study it and, uh, and then go out and find some and make sure you know what it looks like. Because you don't know if you're going to get an idiot for a boss like I had who tells you to go over there and whack a bunch of poison ivy with a weed eater. So that's the first, it's okay to be stupid. See, I was stupid. I was stupid. I didn't, you know, I should have been thinking about things that might hurt me in some fashion and, and t take care of myself. So the, the second story is uh, bees. And there's a, there's a couple of stories there. Let's get into those. Um, was uh, I, I, By the way, be careful when you're working for a millionaire. You think, oh man, this guy's a millionaire. I'm going to get paid pretty good. Well, there's a reason they're million millionaires. A lot of them are cheapskates. There's nothing wrong with being a cheapskate, but you know what? If you got a young teenager who, you know, you're going to hire to cut your grass, pay him a decent amount of money. So this guy, not only did he not pay me worth the crap, okay, and it was a, it was a tough job, man. He's big old side hill, you know, I'm using a push mower, trying to get it around there. It was horrible, man. And uh, I, I, I mean, it was a hot day. I'm sweating, you know. Well, I didn't know he had yellow jackets or a yellow jacket nest in his yard. And my foot, I stepped right in that sucker, and my foot went down, I'd say, up to my knee. And, you know, of course, I pulled it out, and, of course, they began stinging me right away. And I, the only thing you can do is run. I mean, where are you, what are you going to do? So I took off running towards my house. Now, my house was just down the street, I don't know, probably about six houses down. 
And, uh, but I mean, them yellow jackets, they're, they're vicious, man. They followed me all the way to my house. I, get, I think I got stung eight times uh, or more. And, uh, and then when I got to the house, I mean, if you've ever been stung that many times, I got, you know, I got the shakes. It could be, it could be 100 degrees outside and it, it felt like it was, you know, 20 out and I'm shaking all over, you know, and everything. Now, should I have gone to the hospital? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, that's, that's life threatening right there. Did I go? No, I was too stupid. <laughs> you know, I thought, well, this will just wear off, you know, and, and luckily it did. Obviously, I'm still here, you know. Uh, hey, check him out. There's, there's one of our uh, squirrels. Boy, I didn't expect to get all this wildlife today. I'm just in my community doing a walk. There he goes. Let's get up close here. Yeah, there he goes. All right. So we got a turtle and a squirrel. So that was second. And then the other bee story was, uh, and this uh, this was, I guess, you know, it's once again, I was stupid. You know, when you have somebody do work for you, you inspect the job afterwards, okay? You don't trust in the fact that they did it right. So let's say they put in a toilet. You know, go in there and flush it. <laughs> Make sure it works, right? So this guy comes out. He, he changed out the faucets on the outside of my house. And, uh, and, you know, I cut the faucet on, and it worked. I said, okay, you know, we're good, good. You know, I didn't know. Well, the son of a gun didn't cock around the faucet. Now, if he just told me, you know, Mr. Ellis, I don't have any caulk. You're going to need to caulk around those. You know, I would have said, sure, you know, no problem. And, uh, but uh, he didn't. He never said anything about that. And uh, so, I, so I got out there and, uh, uh, anyway, this whole colony of honeybees decided they were going to take up uh, residence in the wall of my house through the hole around that faucet. And I'm going to tell you what, you couldn't even come out the front door of my house without them chasing you. They would chase me to my car. It was unbelievable, you know, and I don't want to kill the honeybees. You know, and everybody I called, they, of course, it's illegal, too. You, you know, you're not supposed to kill honeybees. And, uh, but anyway, so I, I kept uh, calling around, and I couldn't find anybody. So finally, what I had to do, I had to, I, and I feel bad about this, but I cocked them into the wall. Not all of them. And then I, I did finally find a beekeeper, and he came and collected you know what was left of the bees and i'm hoping he got most of them you know um because i am an environmentalist so that's my second bee but, but see the moral of the story did i inspect the job i should have been looking around that faucet to see if he caught it you know i mean that's just common sense because you don't you don't know what's going to crawl through that hole in the wall of your house it could have been spiders it could have been uh I, I, a freaking snake it could have been a, a, a bug infestation you know of some sort like roaches or whatever you know it just so happened to be bees so that's my second bee story i'm trying to get into this uh this is the uh it's okay to be stupid bug video i guess that's what i might just call it so the uh the third story let's see i got the i don't want to get into the chiggers oh yeah this is this is a good one so okay I decided I'm going to backpack Isle Royal. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Michigan, Isle Royal is an island uh, that's part of the state of Michigan that's uh, way, I mean, it's three hours from the northern border of Michigan across Lake Superior uh, to get to the island. And so I thought it'd be cool. So I got it with, you know, a seaplane or you call it a lake plane, I guess. Um, and, uh, and we were going to fly. You know, I figured it'd be cool to fly over Lake Superior and go to the island and and I don't know why you know at that time I was working 60 hours a week driving an hour and a half back and forth to work and uh, by the way that's white privilege right there working 60 hours a week and uh, um, you know uh, anyway I, I get off on a tangent pisses me off yeah I didn't earn what I what I took it got I got 10 days of vacation a year with five days of sick leave that was a great freaking job but anyway so I had the time going to the island when, when I could. And for some reason, it, I went in July. <laughs> now, now, if you've been in Canada or any other northern place, really far north, uh, in July, it's not a good idea. Not only is it hotter than hell, uh, you're gonna have bad weather, you're gonna have, uh, and then, you know, and, and bugs. But at that time, you know, I knew what uh, bug netting was. And so I thought, you know, and I had brought tons of DEET and bug repellent and I thought man you know this will be okay I you know I'll, I'll be all right because you know I've camped with with the bug netting and you know the mosquitoes couldn't get to me because you, you can sit at a picnic table and read a book uh with the mosquitoes landing on you 
No, and we're only talking a couple flying around buzzing you. Okay, I get to Isle Royal, and I, I just, I can't even begin to describe it. It's like, it, it was like a mosquito infestation. There were just hundreds and hundreds. I mean, I looked like a mosquito walking down the path because they were all over me. And uh, it was just horrendous. It was horrible beyond belief. And, uh, and, and even with the bug netting, you know, because that bug netting will come in close to your skin. And when you've got that many mosquitoes, they get you through the bug netting. It was the worst backpacking trip ever. I mean, they, they just, I couldn't even change my socks. And that was where the, like I said, every time you go on a trip, a piece of equipment uh, saves your life. And that's where a floppy hat came in. And what I would do, if you beat away those uh, male mosquitoes that are buzzing you, because it makes, females are the one that bite you, you can, you can get, I, get, I would get about a minute or two of you know uh, without mosquitoes so that I could change those socks and uh, oh my god I, I won't, someday I'll have to tell you about that whole trip but uh, so that's just because this is called the but it's okay to be stupid uh, video don't go <laughs> to Isle Royal in July okay unless you're just gonna stay at the they do have a place on the island where you can stay in like a hotel room almost uh, or a cottage I guess I should say all right so that's the second so that this last one is uh, and that, you know oh by the way let's let's talk about uh, mosquitoes for just a second all right so you you think okay Kirk you had bug netting and you had deep I don't see what the problem is well mosquitoes are like a missile okay they use multiple tactics to hunt their prey okay so it's not just the uh, the the bug repellent is the smell okay because they hunt by smell I don't know how you wouldn't think they'd be able to smell so that's that's all that the deep or whatever that covers up. The next thing they hunt by is is heat. Okay, so your body is radiating a little bit more heat than, than anything else. That's why I said they're they're like a missile. They can hunt multiple ways. And then of course the other thing is the carbon monoxide. Somehow they can detect you know when you're breathing out. I don't know how. And so they they you know it's hard to avoid a mosquito. Let's just put it that way. The DEET helps because you're you're eliminating. You know, it's kind of like when I was in electronic warfare. You know, you can you can fool the defenses in in you know multiple ways, but did you get them all? You know, uh, and sometimes you know one way is enough. All right, so that gets into the mosquito story. So now uh, that we're done with the mosquitoes, and we talked about the bees. Uh, nothing I can tell you there. Just don't don't be sure if you if somebody works on the outside of your house that you make sure <laughs> you didn't leave a hole in your wall. Uh, and so now let's get into the last story, which is me being stupid this week. I mean, I didn't think. I thought I was done being with being stupid. So I decided, you know, I'm going to hike up into the Ocala National Forest. It's it's May, and uh, I've been hiking around in shorts with a t-shirt for the last uh, I don't know for five months. So when I since back way way back when I started making these videos, and uh, so I, I for whatever reason I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't I didn't properly equip myself. So I just went up into the Ocala National Forest with shorts and a t-shirt on. And, uh, oh my God, I wish you could see my, my legs and my body. I got, I got more bug bites. I got poison ivy on my ankles. Uh, but anyway, so I, I, I came home and uh, I did not know, I mean, but chiggers, chiggers were all, I mean, I knew I was itching on the way home. I, I just didn't, because they're little tiny little guys and if you look in the, I'll put a link below to show you what the, the guy looks. And I think there must be multiple uh, uh, varieties of chiggers. Because the pictures that I saw at first were little red guys. And those you can squash. And I think they just bite you. The ones that were on me were these little black critters. And they look like tiny little spiders. And they dig down into your skin. And, and you know, and then you got to dig them out with a needle. Uh, which is the only way I've found to get them out. Some people say you can use finger and fingernail polish. But those things, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I got home and I threw my clothes in the in the hamper, which is what I always do. And then I took my socks outside and I beat them out and emptied my shoes of sand and everything. And I went in and I knew I was itching. And I said, I got to get in that shower. So well, and before I got in the shower, you know, I, I I found one on me and I was like, wow, what the hell is that? So you know, look, I threw him in the shower and he's crawling along. And then there's another one on me. 
and uh and i'm like holy shit man so i in the third one i found a third one so then i, I just get in the shower I mean, if you ever seen that movie it crawls <laughs> that's what it was like oh my god and i so in the shower man i mean triggers are coming off of me by by the hordes and i'm washing i'm just washing them down the drain you know i mean what are you gonna do and so i'm you know i'm, I'm trying to scrub my hair and everything you know and finally i get out of the shower and i think oh shit my clothes you know they, i bet they're in my clothes so i went to the hamper and i took the clothes out and yeah okay they were all over my t-shirt they were all over the uh the, um the uh shorts the under i even found some in my underwear yeah i was like oh my god you know so then i'm thinking the socks I, you know, I, I beat them out, but I didn't, I didn't really inspect them for these little trigger guys. So I, could, I couldn't find the damn socks, man. I'm running around the house going, where the hell are the socks? So, you know, finally I get into my office, and there they are. And so I take them outside, and yeah, for sure, man. They're, they're crawling with triggers too. And uh, so I'm like, oh, man. But I couldn't find them for a while. So, you know, I, I knew that if, now the triggers are in my office. You know, and I'm thinking, oh, geez, you know. I've infested the whole damn house with triggers. <laughs> and so it was, it was, it was brutal. So here, here's what I've learned about chiggers. Okay, well, number one, don't go hiking in the Collin National Forest. With, oh, here's, uh, well, with uh, you know shorts and a t-shirt on. You know, wear proper equipment like hiking shoes, hiking. Be sure and blouse those pants. Now, see this. The problem is, still the chiggers are going to get on you. And uh, so, what do you got to do to be able to hike? There's uh, what I'm going to try. Now, I'm not going to go back to the Akala National Forest. I'm, I'm going to go east because I know that that's not as, as buggy as uh, going up into the forest. Um, and what you do is you spray uh, the white vinegar all over you because I guess the smells. Now, one guy recommended that you eat a clove of garlic. <laughs> no, I'm, not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I can do that, you know, he said, because that'll then your, your, your skin will be sweating out garlic and they, they don't like uh, strong smells i think i'll try the vinegar first <laughs> so that's the that's the first thing that i've learned about chiggers uh, the other thing is if if you do wash them because i i didn't realize that you know i left the hat with my motorcycle in the garage so i probably got chiggers in my garage right now and uh so i did bring the hat in and i washed it with some other clothes and uh that washing machine will kill them you know because when I pulled the uh, clothes out and everything there were little chigger bodies that fell off into the floor and when I when I examined them they were dead so that was good so you be sure you know just throw them clothes in and wash wash them I mean of course you got chiggers in your washing machine you know you don't want that and uh, I mean that rule number one is just avoid them and maybe this uh, vinegar will work I'm gonna spray it all over me put it on my skin and everything and we'll try going uh, east on the Florida Trail and uh, you know, I guess the proof is in the pudding. So, so what? What's the moral of all these stories? First, hand knowledge. Okay. Oh, and then I didn't get into the black fly story. Oh my God. I hope this video is not going to be too long. I can always cut it up uh, with my video editing software. So, um, all right. So here's another. It's okay to be stupid story. So me and a buddy, we're going to go camping in Canada. Now Canada has what's called black fly season, and. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to camp in, in Canada, that, of course, you know, right now it's a communist nation, so I'm not sure you want to go there. I'm not sure they'd even let you in anyway. So, but uh, back in the day, you know, the camping there was uh, cheaper than it was in the United States. So we went to this uh, provincial park in southern Ontario, and uh, we got there and we set up camp, and it wasn't too bad. But man, these, these little black flies would come in and bite on you. And it, it just got to be miserable. I mean, it, you could survive it, but it was just terrible. And sometimes... In the evenings, man, they would just come swarming in, uh, you know, and it was like because people are grilling, and I guess I don't know, it just that would attract them. And uh, oh man, that was brutal. And so finally, my buddy, I give him credit, he went down to the uh, ranger station, and they were, of course, they got it in stock, bug netting. That was my first experience with bug netting, and uh, so he he bought me and him some, you know, and I paid him for it. And uh, so you know, that's that's uh, that's all you need. That's all you need for black flies is bug netting. And did I test that? Is this first-hand knowledge? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, because I uh, what I did was that it turns out that it was kind of a swampy area or just really a swamp nearby. And uh, But it had this trail that went through the swamp that you could bicycle. And uh, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to test out this bug netting and see if it works. But you know, if you pedal really fast on a bike, you know, you can get through them. They won't, they can't really land on you that well. 
Uh, but if you're walking, you're a dead man. <laughs> You're gonna get eaten. There's, gonna, there's just gonna be a carcass of bones left, you know. If, if, but uh, riding a bike, you can you can you can pedal right through a big swarm of black flies if you have to. If you're pedaling fast, just pray that the chain doesn't come off or something like that. But uh, it's kind of like when I used to bike mountain bike uh, up in uh, um, northern Michigan um, or in Battle Creek, I guess I should say, when I was working on the A10 Warthogs, I go mountain biking, and if you pedal fast enough, the mosquitoes will stay off of you. It's only when you stop. And of course, I was too stupid back then to realize that, you know, if something happened to the bike and I had to walk it or walk out, I would have been screwed, you know. But no, I was enjoying the mountain biking, you know. I, sometimes I'd, I would bring the, the mosquito netting, but, I, you know, a lot of times I just thought, well, as long as I pedal fast, you know, I'll be all right. Yeah, you're stupid. It's okay to be stupid. All right, so getting back to the black flies. So I went in there, and uh, I mean, just to tell you how thick they were, was a lot of times, you know, I would just stop and I'd see... You could just, and they just, I'd look like a big fly monster, you know, with them all over me. And so you could just take your hand and smack your wrist and 10 flies would fall to the ground dead. You know, that's how many there were. But could they get me through the bug netting? No. I was, I was, I felt like Superman, you know, with that bug netting uh, and the black flies. You know, and I, I, and it was beautiful, by the way. It looked like a prehistoric uh, area, you know, that area. And I imagine, you know, probably a large portion of the year you can't even go in there and so I really really enjoyed that bike ride it was I'm so glad I had that bug netting so that's the, the moral of that story is don't go to Canada during black fly season <laughs> look 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 at what the conditions are going to be before you go somewhere you know if you're going to go to Isle Royal don't go in July when the mosquitoes are out if you're going to go to Canada don't go during black fly season same with Alaska if you're going to go to Alaska don't because the bugs up there are just horrendous uh, during the summertime from what I've been told, uh, my dad was stationed up there. He said it was unbelievable, you know, what the what the bugs were. So, uh, so there you go. That's the another okay. It's okay to be stupid uh, video. Uh, you know, you, hopefully you learned a little bit because uh, first-hand knowledge means everything, and that's all first-hand knowledge right there. So you you know that I know what I'm talking about. And uh, I guess all I can say is uh, peace out, and I hope you're enjoying these videos.